Eddie Rodosvich, George Stoya here, centerscoop.com, instant reaction, Oklahoma survives. I think that that's the best way to say it. Uh, 31-29, Kendall Doby comes up with a stop on uh, the two-point conversion down there in the north end zone, George. And, uh, you know, I, I think that this is a game that we talked about a little bit in regard to not necessarily them playing as poorly as they did and not executing, but uh, this was a game that it was going to catch your attention. And we talked to Matt Merchell from the Orlando Sentinel on the uh, game day preview talking about how, you know, Central Florida had a lot to play for, even though they were on a three-game losing streak for the first time since 2015 and uh, they almost walked out of here with a win today. Yeah, I mean, UCF, um, you know, played really good there uh, until I think they were up six there going into the fourth quarter, uh, and Oklahoma finally came alive offensively. I think that's where we, we should start, Eddie, is it, the defense gives up the touchdown there at the end. They get the two-point conversion stop. If not for the defense stopping UCF there in the second half so many times, holding them to field goals a couple times, Oklahoma's losing this football game, and I think in previous years, I mean, we've said this a million times, former defenses are letting that game maybe get out of control, letting UCF build something. The offense was just pitiful today uh, until the fourth quarter, really, and even in the fourth quarter, it felt like a struggle at times. They can't run the ball very effectively. I don't know what's going on there. They were able to finally get some chunks at the end. Gavin Sawchuk maybe he's the guy going forward. I mean, he was definitely looked like the best running back today, especially at the end, has the 30-yard touchdown. But, uh, you know, look, at the end of the day, Eddie, uh, I don't think you burn this tape necessarily, but uh, I do think Oklahoma needs to just move on to the next one. And I know that uh, it's hard to look at it that way, but at the end of the day, it is a win, and it's really hard. I think everybody after the Texas game just said, okay, these six games, uh, there's there's – Oklahoma's going to be favored, right? It should be easy to go undefeated. It's never easy. Winning in this conference is never easy, even against the new opponents. UCF's a good football team. Gus Malzahn's a, a football coach that's been around a long time. I thought John Reese Plumley did some nice things for them today. Uh, they, they did some trickeration. We saw that coming. Uh, but, look, Oklahoma was able to uh, – figure it out and I don't know if we say that about this football team a year ago. Sure let's start with the uh, the running back situation. Yeah. Tawi Walker served an in-house suspension today. I think that we'll have more to kind of uh, offer I guess if you want to listen to the Eskridge Lexus postgame podcast with Kerry Murdoch when we get back over to the Sooner Scoop offices but at the end of the day he wasn't available today. He was suspended uh, and you know I, that puts Oklahoma certainly in a, uh, a situation. You have Marcus Major who's very obviously banged up has a shoulder injury. There was a couple times down here in the north end zone that you could see that he's labored and so you know moving forward you're going to get Tawi Walker back it was the question that you asked of uh, Brent Venables in the post game but you know it's it's a very trying time right now and especially as you're trying to work into new guards uh, with you know the injury situation it just is not very good right now running the football let's just be blunt they don't have a good running back right now in my opinion uh, it's just not they have some guys that are maybe slightly above average. Uh, you know, maybe Gavin Sajak becomes that guy. I don't know, but they just don't have it. And it, it was very evident early in the game. I mean, they had to line up Jalil Farouk at running back at times. Uh, they did some different things where they handed the ball to Drake Stoops. They handed it to Gavin Freeman. Uh, I think they're going to have to get creative unless somebody starts to pop. And I'm to the point now, Eddie, where I want to see Caleb Hicks and Dalen Smothers. And I, I know they're freshmen, and they're going to make freshman mistakes. And I don't know what they look like in practice, but give me somebody different. Uh, you know, and it, I even asked Jeff Lebby point blank after the game, hey, do you guys still want somebody to be your go-to running back? And you could tell, I think, in his answer, he's very short and to the point he said, yes, we want to have somebody that we can turn around and just you know, trust to go pick up chunks. And they don't have that. I mean, last year you had Eric Gray. He was really good. Uh, and I don't know if it's an offensive line issue. Uh, you know, Lebby was also – I asked him that too, and he said, look, it's – it's an everybody issue. It's, it's not just one position yeah. group. But I think it's also clear, though, they don't have an explosive running back right yeah. now, and I don't know uh, who that person can be. So th they need to figure that out, Eddie, because it's going to cost them. You've got to be able to run the football. And we saw it at the, in the, at the end of this game. When Oklahoma was able to run the football at the end, they were able to ice the game. Uh, and if they can't figure that out moving forward, it's eventually going to bite them. Yeah, and so and let's stay there. I mean, I, I think that you do look at the fourth quarter. Uh, they were able to run the football a little bit better. Both of the scoring drives were a product of that. Uh, Gavin Sawchuk broke off the big run. Maybe, just maybe, if you want to be uh, you know, positive about this run game, they did maybe find something in the fourth quarter. How much of that was they just wore down Central Florida? How much of that was uh, Gavin Sawchuk maybe finding a little bit of a rhythm? But at the end of the day, they got major issues 
uh, in the backfield right now. And, uh, and along the line. I mean, uh, you look at the sacks today that the offensive line gave up. Uh, you know, we talked to Andrew Rame after the game. You were standing there, George, and it's one of those it, – it's just weird because I don't think that there's, like, major, major flaws. It just feels like they're not on the same page right now. They're just not – meshing and I think part of that is we've had you know we've had them have so many different rotations whether it's McCade Mattire which by the way everybody has been piling on McCade since he's gotten here they missed him today I mean it was very clear at right guard right guard was an issue and eventually it was Savion Bird that they rolled with there in the fourth quarter Uh, and I actually thought he came in and played pretty well in the run game so I wonder if it's Savion next Saturday McCade went through warm-ups. He even went in. I don't know if you realize he went in on one of the extra points uh, when I think Caleb Schaefer got a little banged up. So they need to get him back. But I think that that's the issue with the offensive line around. There's just been a lot of shuffling, um, and, and it just hasn't it hasn't come all together. Which is crazy to say because uh, you know a couple weeks ago against Texas, I thought they had their best performance. And so I don't know if it was a lack of effort today uh, from them or, or just uh, you know they had to rotate multiple guys. I'm not sure, but. Uh, it's something they got to get figured out, and, and you know I still think they will, Eddie. I think they've got the right people there. It's just trying to get that unit to be one, you know, one group, and it's it's takes all five, and and it's hard when you're rotating so many guys. So I don't know. I, I don't know, Eddie. I, I, I I'm at the I'm same. To, I'm, I'm at the same be, spot as you. I'm trying to be positive no, about it I because mean, look, at the end of the day, you and I've been around this before, right? You win in advance. We we saw it back in. 2017, 2018, 2019, those years, they had these close games and they still were able to get the Big 12 championship, win a Big 12 championship. That's going to happen. And and look, they're coming off their best performance of the year. This was easily their worst performance of the year. Now it's, okay, let's reset, get back in there, you know, look at the film uh, and go, you know, perform against the Kansas team on Saturday that you're going to see a lot of the same stuff that you saw today in terms of trickeration and, and running the football. I want to get to some positives because there were some positives within the game. Nick Anderson shows up again, uh, the five receptions for over 105 yards. Uh, He had two touchdowns. Drake Stoops was solid yet again when they really needed some big catches. Uh, It was usually Drake Stoops outside of the Jaden Gibson uh, grab in the fourth quarter that moved the sticks. But, uh, you know, it seemed like it's still a little bit weird in terms of trying to find that guy to replace Andre Anthony. And I get it. It was the first game that they've been out here without him. Uh, but it just didn't seem as explosive today as maybe that you've seen through the first six. And I asked Dylan about Andrell after the game because coming into it, you and I have talked about it, but he was the most targeted receiver on third down for him coming into the game. So he's going to have to adjust to that. He, he said, look, it's going to take some time to build that. I think that third and nine to Nick Anderson – uh, down there on that final drive was a huge play. Maybe Nick is that guy, and we saw Nick again play really well today. What is it? Eight touchdowns on 16 receptions on the season. So the guy just makes big plays. But Eddie, I, I didn't think they created much separation. I thought the receivers weren't creating a, a ton of separation today, which left Gabriel kind of sitting back there for a while, which led to a couple of the sacks and then also just incompletions. I thought Drake, like you said, he was a stud down the stretch. He's just a really solid football player. Knows how to get open in the right spaces, then obviously breaks some tackles and just gets gets upfield. But I wonder if we start seeing more of a, a Jaquez Petaway. Uh, we saw him today on one play. I wonder if he's somebody they get more involved. I think Brennan Thompson's not healthy. Um, you know, we didn't see him at all today. He had a towel around his neck on the sideline. I wonder if he's not 100%. I thought he was somebody that could maybe be that guy that stretches the field. But... Um, you know, all in all, look, I, I think, it, like you said, it's going to take some time to replace Andrell, but that was a clear issue today on third down, especially who's Dylan going to throw the ball to. Weird day defensively as well for Oklahoma, because I think that, and Josh McQuestion mentioned it on Twitter after the game, you take away a couple plays, they played really, really well today. You have the 13 tackles for loss. All 13 tackles for loss by a different player for Oklahoma. I thought Trace Ford flashed at times today. Uh, it just... It seems like the bust really, really cost them. I mean, I think about the one right before halftime, uh, the 86-yard touchdown. Uh, But at the same time, when they needed to come up with big plays and get off the field today and give the offense an opportunity, especially when they were trailing by six in the fourth quarter, they did that. Now, you can you can get into a debate about that final drive and allowing them to score and having to get up with two-point conversion, but at the same time, Hell of a play by Kendall Dolby down there in uh, the north end zone to save the game. To me, looking at the defense, I'm, I'm really just not concerned because you you look at it, UCF just, they had a couple big explosive plays. The one right before the half 
Woody can't bite, right? But that's a tough play, and it's a great play by UCF, right? And you kind of just have to tip your cap. Now, I think OU did, by the rules, kind of get screwed on the taunting thing. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I, it doesn't matter because he was gonna, he was so wide open. But uh, then you look at the 54-yard run I think UCF had in the first half. Going to happen every once in a while. UCF can run the football. It's going to happen. The goal line stand thing about that, look, they're, they're going to get a goal line stand there if Jaron Kanick doesn't get the unsportsmanlike penalty. UCF scores on the next play. Uh, you look at the final drive. They hit some big plays over the middle that, you know, Billy Bowman almost had the pick a couple plays before. Uh, he almost had it, on I think, on the, the big first uh, uh, catch, too, on that drive as well. So they're close to making those plays on those. And so I'm not worried about the defense, man. You knew that they were going to step up and make a play because they had been doing it all game. They were getting stops. Uh, and they really buckled down down there, man. That's the thing is, like, whether it's a two-point conversion or uh, on the goal line, whatever it is, uh, they, the defense does not seem to uh, get too down on themselves when they do give up one of those big plays. Another really solid day for Ethan Downs as well. Six yeah. six tackles on the day. Uh, he had a, a sack. He had a tackle for loss. He had three quarterback what hurries. Stutzman's in his, ends up today with 12 tackles, one tackle for loss, one forced fumble. So yeah. it – you know, again, I feel like, and I think everybody out there watching this probably realizes this is kind of the uh, the song and dance that you go through when you cover an Oklahoma game or you're an Oklahoma fan. Uh, it's going to feel like a loss for the next six days when yeah. before they get back out on the field in Lawrence. One thing that they do have to figure out, and my God, do they have to figure it out, the kicking situation, George. It's, uh, I think we can say this on YouTube, it's fucking awful right now. And they got it. We can, we can go back and edit it if we can't say it. I think we can, though. It's not good. It's going to cost them a game. And you asked Brent after the game if he still feels confident with Zach Schmidt, and he said he did. But I'm telling you, man, it's, it's one of those things that if you do not figure it out, it's going to cost them, and we're going to be sitting here on one of these instant reactions talking about a missed field goal or missed field goals today costing them. Think about to going forward the the environments they're gonna have to play in and and, and field goals are there they're, i just am convinced there's going to be a game this year where zach schmidt lines up and if he makes it ou wins if he misses it ou loses or it goes to overtime whatever there's going to be a game winning situation and it, I, my faith in him Britt may be confident in him i am not eddie yeah. at this point and it's it's not like he's missing you know last year he missed a couple 50 yarders you know, he had the one against West Virginia in a monsoon, and it's like, okay, that's an excuse. He had outs. Today, yeah. you don't have any outs. Zero outs. That I mean, I, I wasn't down on the field, but it didn't feel like the wind was blowing a whole lot. I can tell you, the wind was not blowing. It was hot today. Yeah, I mean, it was. there was no excuse to miss. And, and he's missing ones that are like 38 yards, I think, was one today, and it's like... Come on, man! Like that, you got it. Those are those should be gimmies. Forty-three yards was the other one. He makes one from twenty-five, but um, I'm at the just, point. Just look at it today. Yeah. I mean, you're Oklahoma's down by six in the fourth quarter. Guess how many field goals they had missed? Yeah, two. And 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 here's the thing, Eddie, is wh why not give Gavin Marshall a shot? Because at at the worst, it's just as bad it is as it is currently. Or you start going for it on fourth downs. I, I thought one of I think the thirty-eight yarder, maybe it was. It was like a fourth and five, and I was at. I think he had already missed the one earlier, maybe. Uh, and I was like, you know what? You just go for it at this point. But um, I don't know. I, he still feels confident. Maybe Zach Schmidt is just spectacular in practice. But we all know kickers. It's different in a game. And I think the other part too going forward is it's a mental thing with these yeah. guys. And when Zach misses a big one against Texas, right, that almost cost him, you know, a couple weeks ago, and then you miss two today, where you, you know, it could have cost him. Where's his mental, where's his head at right now? And, and that's why I'm like, maybe it's time to give someone else a shot. I will say, we want to keep it positive. They found a punter. My goodness, yeah. Luke Elzinga was phenomenal. I think he had five punts, 51.6 yards was his average. Coming into the game, Eddie, they were averaging 37.4 yards per punt. So they 14 point, uh, 14 yard, uh, you know, improvement there is crazy. UCF, by the way, is terrible. They're second uh, to last in the country in punt, net punting. So they were terrible. And oh, you didn't take advantage of it too. That was one thing. Oh, you should have been up 21, nothing maybe at the, in the first quarter with the field position they were getting, but they missed two field goals. They go three and out a couple times. It was just, uh, I don't know, Eddie, I, it was bad. I, I'm to the point where I'm like, just, it's time to, to move on and People are going to bitch and complain about it all week, and, I, and so. I get it. It was a bad performance, but you just got to hope that next week they figure it out. Absolutely, and I will say, 
special teams wise, like coverage units. They threw they threw yeah. a couple of reverses at Oklahoma today, uh, and they handled that stuff well. Yeah. So Oklahoma survives 31-29. They improved to seven and zero. Uh, I believe for like the third time since 2000. So it uh, doesn't happen around here quite often. But uh, at the end of the day, when we're talking it like again, when we go back to August and you're talking about a team that, you know, if they could just get to nine or ten wins, they could do that here in a couple weeks. And there still is a ton to play for, obviously, uh, you just know, with where they're at. Yeah, it, 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 a win's a win's a win. Uh, Oklahoma does survive, though, 31-29. Uh, we will be back on tonight. If you want to hear the Eskridge Lexus postgame podcast, that can be found on all your uh, podcasting platforms. And then we will be back with uh, Josh McQuestion on Monday talking about the game and kind of talking about where he was throughout uh, Thursday and Friday in the high school ranks. So for George Stoya, I'm Eddie Radosovich from Norman. Oklahoma wins 31-29. We'll talk to you next time.